Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Wednesday, February 7, 2020. Here's an update on Baby Chick 1947 S25 Sportsman. If you'll remember, we removed all of the hull side planking and the transom planking, and I'll hand it off to Rick to talk about how we got to this porcupine. Okay, we started out, we had to take all these battens off and take them to the drill press and had to screw out or drill out every single screw that had broke. And then we reassembled them, put them all back on. And then as you can see, there's a lot of toothpicks. There's an average of say four up to 15 in each hole. So there's approximately about 8,000 on this side alone. And then we're at the point now where we gotta start trimming them. So I take the fin tool here and I'll start right here. take very long to do it. I can probably have this whole side done in about 10 minutes. So That's a lot less time than it took to put them all in. <laughs> yeah, it took a, pretty it, much a whole day just to do one side, a little over a day on this side because there's so many. And the glue you used is uh, Gorilla. Gorilla Watertight glue. Uh, Gorilla's actually come out with a new Watertight that it calls something like Extreme or something. But at the same time, the gallon tubs of the glue seem to have evaporated from the market in a ploy to raise prices. Uh, 18 ounces is about the most you can get at this point. So, Rick, am I correct that you're going to take shave all these off? Yep, yeah, shave every one of them off, and then we're going to use some CPES. Do you sand them fair first? Uh, usually I can get them down pretty smooth. I just did it pretty quick right there, but um, by the time I'm done, there won't be any, anything visible. It'll be all out. And then we start putting the planks back on. And I've had several questions. Where do you start? The water line or at the gunnel? Start at the gunnel. Put the gunnel plank on first, and then you'll want to use uh, flat bar clamps as you put the second and the third and the fourth and by the time you get up here to the chine plank you will have restacked everything closed all the seams and so usually we have to replace the pl chine plank with one that we saw out a little bit wider well in case you're wondering what that might look like why don't i walk around to the starboard side and hand it off to Joe, who's gonna talk about what he's been doing here. Yeah, so after um, Rick got everything done, everything cps trimmed back, um, we start at the bottom and I lay down every plank and I embed it in uh, Thixo Flex. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot because a little goes a very long way. And when I started on the bottom, I first started here way up at the bow and I tacked into the frame here and here and as I go I kept using a squeeze clamp and just clamp it all the way down so it's nice and tight. Once I got the first row done then it's same thing you go up to your second tack on your frame and then get a series of clamps all the way down it so you can get the tight, tightest possible seam. Why don't you show them the, the squeeze clamps we use here. Absolutely. So there is a majority of them. Uh, these work great and we also have another one but for right down at the bottom these ones work great because you can squeeze it as much as you want and believe it or not with your just your hand you can crank it down. And then for the hard to reach areas these bar clamps are absolutely amazing. They have just enough flex where you can actually still fit it on each plank. Sometimes you have to maneuver it around or flip it up the other way like this. But I'm telling you, with these, 
you can crank them right down so it's absolutely tight. I mean, there's gonna be some areas where you may not be able to get absolutely everything out, but luckily that's what, where the Fixo Flex comes in. Cause that, once you, it's already on there and you sand it, it won't necessarily take in stain, but when you get you're done your staining, sealing, and your varnishing, once you start applying your varnish over that, it's nearly invisible. It blends right into everything else. Let's make sure everybody understands. We don't paste Thixo Flex into all of these seams. You don't want to do that unless you want a, a boat that looks like a horizontal zebra uh, because they, Thixo does take stain, but the finish and everything is going to be slightly different. So you, it's not about doing the whole thing. What it's about is getting these seams as tight as you can. And this, this remember, is all the original planking for this boat. So we have yet to insert all the bungs. I hate to count how many those are, but we know there were 8,000 toothpicks, uh, but there was more than one per hole. So uh, we'll be putting in far fewer bungs. And you can see that Rick has replaced many of the battens. Uh, there are many more replaced higher up on the hull side. Uh, once this all gets installed on both sides, Rick and Joe will climb beneath it and CPES the inside surfaces and then paint them all with uh, Sandusky Paint Company, Chris Craft Maroon Bilge Paint. Another thing too, um, when you're trying to preserve as much of the natural wood as possible, um, when you take the planks off, you can do a lot of the Dutchman's um, before you put them back on. But in some cases, um, or if you have a little blowout, that needs to be done while the plank is back on it. That way you can have your seam line be exactly the same. So when you're putting your piece in there, you're gonna have the same kind of reveal all the way. Cause if you do that um, previous to be putting it on, you could actually, no matter how good you are, you'll never be able to get this Dutchman to be exactly where it needs to be with the plank off. You might have a little recess in it, so you'll be able to see it. The point of doing a Dutchman with it on here is to make it seamless. So we'll keep applying planks on this side. Rick will go on to port and Give the porcupine a haircut. Later this afternoon, we'll be ready to start putting planking on uh, the port side. And I even got it right this time with the boat upside down, port and starboard. So that's our update on Wednesday, February 7, 2024, on our 1947 25-foot S25 Sportsman. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.